Hey, I'm Leo. Hi, my name is Double Double. I ran this game two years ago here. And uh, I watched this man run this game for, it was like a challenge, I think. Yeah, I, yeah, that, that's how I learned this game. I did it for a 12-hour challenge. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to run this too. And here we are. So And take more than 12 hours to learn this game, which is the smart idea. Yeah, I, I learned it a bit longer, but it still was pretty fun. Um, so yeah, we're going to get straight into it. Basically, Memodor is a Metroidvania. Uh, we're going to have to do a whole bunch of bosses damageless. Those give me extra items, which make the run go even faster. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of running around, and we'll explain stuff as we go. So I'll delete this top file in case I need to come back to the main menu and start again. Um, but uh, once I've selected my difficulty, we'll be good to go. So in three, two, one, go. All right, so the backstory to this game is uh, you're a priestess and there is a curse that has befallen the land of Karst and you're going up to the queen of Karst to uh, have an audience with her to figure out how to try to solve it. This is our companion, this is the farthest they can bring us, and uh, yeah, we're gonna have to go on our own from here. But we've got some moves. We've got rolling. We've got jumping. We've got both at the same time, which hopefully can be shown in a bit. There it is. That's a roll jump. It is literally press the buttons on the same frame and you'll like, you'll get the, the height of a minimal input jump and then you also roll. It's, it's just a nice, uh, nice handy dandy move for uh, maneuverability. Uh, especially when there's a small height platform in front of you. I don't do it all too often because it's literally a frame perfect input, but uh, it is faster if you want to um, like traverse ledges and stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, alongside that, we have two weapons here. Uh, we've got our uh, melee attack, which is an actual leaf, a genuine maple leaf. You can also see like some maple leaf particles uh, as we double jump. Uh, and then we've got a bow, which we, which we used earlier to hit a switch, and we're going to be doing it again coming up here in this uh, this next room. Yeah, quick bow attack to get that enemy out of the way, some jumping. Sometimes you miss a platform that can happen, this is the backup for it. Hit that switch with a bow, and then patiently wait for this platform to go down. Just taunt this enemy. <laughs> I need to hit the yeah. bell. Let's be yeah. safe. So, the, so bells do a bunch of things. Uh, there's usable items uh, that have limited use. The uses of that get restored. Uh, when you hit the save bell, obviously you also save your progress and you also restore your health to full. Uh, occasionally, uh, you may have seen the word poisoned come on screen. Uh, yeah, a lot of these yellow greenish clouds, they cause you to be poisoned, uh, which just ticks down your health over time. Typical poison status affecting games. And yeah, that's a tight platform cycle. Um, Got the half cycle. Yeah, I got the half cycle. So we got on it as it went down and then went up. Uh, that's not a great place to get poisoned because we get very low health here. Like that. And yeah, <laughs> then an attack can, uh, can kill you. This is why we hit save bells. Yep. So this entire section is the only part of the run where I can get poisoned. And because there's so many poison enemies, it's just kind of, okay, I'm going to just take lots of damage and try not to die. Uh, um... Well, technically, uh, you can get poisoned uh, throughout the entire run if you do things incorrectly. Oh, uh, yeah. But, <laughs> but I mean... we'll, we'll get into that in more detail. Uh, uh, as Leo mentioned, there's uh, we're going to be doing bosses demos just to get items because uh, that's a bonus reward. And yeah, that's the that's what this run is built around is getting these damageless items uh, to Ow. also then do other bosses, uh, bosses fast and damageless, and just kind of snowball it on like that. And here we are at the first boss. So Leo is going to focus here for a second. Uh, so he's going to go for a quick kill. I will also be silent so he can focus, and we'll explain it afterwards if he gets it. Yo, nice, he got, got it. it. <laughs> so. Uh, so this is a day of the first boss of the game. The pearl on the back is the weak point. And yeah, by standing in a certain place, you can manipulate a day to do a certain attack, which puts the pearl in front of her. And by uh, even and he was pausing the game to uh, essentially pause buffer to look for a certain frame on screen. Then unpause and let go afterwards, because if you let go during the pause menu, the input drops and you don't fire any arrows. And uh, yeah, just something weird happens with the damage calculation when multiple arrows hit 
uh, at the time that they do when you pull off the quick kill and it just kills the AI in one hit. Uh, furthermore, we've been taking a couple detours in the first area to get some uh, money, spelled M-U-N-N-Y. Uh, and we bought an item called the Crystal Seed, which is going to come into play in the next boss fight, as is the item that we got for beating Adea Damageless, uh, which is Adea's Pearl. This is what I mentioned with uh, being able to poison, be, get poison every run, because uh, uh, Adea's Pearl adds poison property to the arrows, as you can see right there. This is a poison cloud. If you stand in that, you poison yourself. So, don't. Uh, this is Mocha. Uh, spoilers, it's not the real boss of this fight. This is just a phase zero of, of sorts. That's a ball. Don't get hit by it. It does damage, and that ruins your damage to fight. And the cloud it leaves behind curses you, which <laughs> disables for you from using your items. <laughs> but uh, luckily, we have a sweet dodge roll to get out of hairy situations like that. <laughs> that was a bit sketchy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, 80 money is what we needed to buy the crystal seed, which is going to come into play right here. Uh, so it boosts the damage of our physical attacks, both the melee uh, hit and the bow. Uh, the bow can also charge. It's fully charged as uh, Kaho, our main character here, is glowing red. Unfortunately, rolls drop your bow charge, so you have to recharge it again. And yeah, that's the patented Lubella dive. You cannot hit her during this. We're just now sat here waiting. Health ticks down a little bit because he's poisoned at the moment. Uh, what, what also happened is a little fairy appeared seemingly randomly. Uh, what happened there is Leo inputted the directional inputs of the Konami code, which uh, summons a little fairy called Konami with the C. Uh, and yeah, after a, after a, 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 a delay, then a bunch of uh, blue rays come raining down. It's just extra DPS. It's great. And yeah, to, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just orange. something you have in your arsenal. You can find it in the game somewhere. There's a certain room where you're tipped off on it, and that's how you you're meant to find out. That that's a thing. Uh, but yeah, it's this a secret item you can use. It has one use per save bell. So we can't just spam it anywhere, but we'll, we'll, we will find save bells plenty between bosses, so we will at least have it for every boss fight. Uh, so yeah, here's a cutscene. Uh, we meet Princess Eri. Uh, you can see how, you can t obviously tell this is a princess from her <laughs> attire. She's got the drip for it, at least. Currently just mashing yeah, through all this dialogue. Yeah, we're introducing ourselves to her, and she tells us to like leave as fast as you can because the curse is coming, except we're here to solve the curse, so no, we're going to stay. But this is Area 3. Uh, not necessarily. It's a Metroidvania, so you can go different places, but for the speedrun route, this is Area 3. Uh, the Subterranean Grave. Big thing here is water. Water is very slow. We want to be on the ground as much as possible so we can roll, since the roll is not affected by it. But yeah, you can see how... Slow we move in uh, in water while we're swimming. All right, so there's also spikes here. Uh, spikes kill you instantly uh, when they hit you. The only time they won't kill you in one hit is when they don't hit you because you have invisibility frames from getting hit earlier. Yeah, which uh, might come up at one point, potentially, if uh, I do get hit. But it's yeah, a nice way to stop myself from dying if... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of spike pits are also don't have a floor because you're not meant to land on them. You're, you're meant to die when you hit them because it spikes. So there's sometimes no floor below them. So it, but you might not get hit but by the spikes, but you'll fall in the pit and die anyways. Yep. Um, so there's one of the little blinking thing. That's items you can pick up, except it was in a really small corridor that we can't access. Uh, we will lay. We won't come back here anymore. Uh, so that's an item that gets skipped over. Uh, but we will unlock an ability that lets us go through small places like that later. Uh, so yeah, what we're doing right now is just making our way or to the next boss. Yeah, basically this run is just run from one place to the next to get to the next bo boss. Yeah. Um, which is no surprise, really. I'm still jealous that you can do the room better than me. <laughs> But yeah, we're ah. come up, about to come up the next boss. So let's talk about the damage boss item we got from Rubella earlier, the Bachman patch. So hit that enemy so it doesn't get in the way during the boss fight. It'll die now. You can hear the, the hear the little little uh, little sound. Yeah, here's Derelict Frida. So this is the Bachman patch. Bunch of blocks rain on down. 
And yeah, we use the other tools we had before. Uh, so this is the safe uh, strategy you can do. There's a faster strategy you can do where you just fight uh, free the straight up melee, but it is, it is risky because you need to really know the attacks well uh, to be able to see them coming, except for this one. Big charge up. That was close. <laughs> nice, nice duck. Uh, but yeah, duck and spam arrows is the uh, the safe way to do it. And yeah, with that charge up, you have to interrupt it with four melee hits. Uh, but three is the like doing a full melee combo. So two melee, two full melee combos is what I do. Uh, but yeah, you can also go for a couple more before the next attack can come in. So damage bot item for Frida is the spark thread. Uh, that's just when you use it, there's a big ring that emits from yourself, and it just does a burst of damage. On top of that, we picked up a crest fragment. Uh, there's an area we're going to have to get in later to get the... Uh, uh, for the purpose of getting the true ending, which is required for the run. Uh, so yeah, here's, here's a bit of backtracking through an area we've been to before. Uh, Those swinging platforms always make me nervous. I think they make everybody nervous. But yeah, now so we're back in. So now we're gonna go to the right because we're gonna leave. We got the uh, garden key in the like water section earlier on, so that's why we can go this way now. And the sparse thread is really important for basically every boss fight, I think. Yeah, it is definitely it is used for every boss fight throughout. Uh, pretty much all the boss items are. There's a few minor exceptions, but but yeah, now we're in my White Leaf Memorial Park. Uh, so the Crest Fragment, not only is it, do we need them, there's four of them to collect uh, to get into that area for the true ending, uh, each of them also gives a special ability, and for the Crest Fragment after Frida, you get a faster bow charge. So the fastest way to deal damage with the bow was to do, just press them as fast as possible. And from now on, it's uh, half what we call half charges, where you let the yellow particles appear of a partial char full charge and do it. So. This is a boss. Uh, Leo got hit. That's completely fine. This is the only boss, aside from the final boss, uh, that we don't have to do damage this. Because uh, the damage boss item for this is an item that restores a small amount of HP on every enemy you defeat. Not if I get hit twice, though. But yeah, it, the, there's not much more leeway just because we don't have to do it damage this. Uh, but yeah, that item, it's not useful for the run because we tend to not really uh, kill a lot of enemies that aren't bosses. Uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, the, the heal is also so minor, it's not worth picking up. So, even if you were to do a damage list, we skip over it, anyways. Because it also takes up an item slot, because you can have uh, up to three passive items and up to three active items. The Crystal Seed and the Bachman Patch, uh, those are the items you can see on the top left, as well as the Sparse Thread. Uh, those are active items, and then the passive items, uh, an example of that is Idea's Pearl. The double dive is awful. Yeah, exactly. It is very common to get a dive right at the start, so it's smart to to uh, belt out an arrow early. Uh, so if she does an early dive, you at least get some poison damage. Also, oh no, we died, except not really. Uh, yeah, she tries good. to curse us, but I would say she fails because she curses us. In the perfect way possible. To look this adorable. Why would you not want to be a cat? Especially when that cat has still the majority of your capabilities. So we because can't use a bow, but we have better maneuverability. We run faster. Um, so basically, you're going to just see me run around as a cat for the, the next however long. Yeah, there's essentially uh, three tiers of um, fastest movement that you can do. It's uh, Third is rolling as a human. Second is running as a cat. And then third is... Uh, what we call roll cancelling as a cat. Leo, Leo demonstrated it, demonstrates it here. So, uh, rolling as a cat is the fastest way, but except there's a, a considerable slowdown at the end of the roll. Uh, but if you do, if you're on the ground, you have gonna have to deal with it. There's no way to, to avoid that. So what we do is we do a roll jump to sleepy get that cat. speed. And sleepy cats. Exactly. Is this really a curse when you're this adorable? Um, but yeah, uh, another thing, don't, yeah, Leo skipped the ladder, that's because that's another thing you can do as a cat, it's one of the few uh, limits. Uh, but yeah, what we do is roll jump and then do an attack to cancel out that slowdown. And yeah, that is, uh, yeah, 
cat rolling, cat roll jumping. Uh, and that is the fastest technique you can do, but it also requires pretty considerable mastery of roll jumps to be able to do everywhere. Honestly, I'm surprised I'm hitting as many as I am. Yeah, exactly. Because the issue is if you don't hit the jump as part of the roll, you can see that, that uh, when you're in cat form, you roll and then you kind of stumble a bit. You don't continue your speed. So Yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's, it is, it's as we said, frame perfect, uh, you know, but it's the pressing the two same button, two buttons at the exact same time. And it's like if you press the jump too early, you just get a jump. If you press the roll too early, you, as you saw, the you get the roll, ground roll with the uncancelable slowdown. Uh, now we went into all the way to the right into a room and then out. Uh, that's gonna come into play later. But first, we have a boss. We no longer have a boss. <laughs> Incredibly quick, especially with this boss thread. All right, so, so it's so it's time for the. Uh, we did a little bit of backtracking earlier, but that was just for speedrunning routing. Now we're gonna do actual game mandated Metroidvania backtracking. I think this is a perfect time for someone. Give us some uh, lovely messages. Of course, I uh, can do that, Nya, because I uh, got a three euro donation from Dum Dum saying cat speech, question mark. <laughs> so uh, I suppose that uh, curse has been cast upon me as well, Nya. Um, furthermore, we've got a five euro donation from Sentinel again saying roses are red, violets are blue. I'm a fan of cats, the line speech upon you. <laughs> You're really getting cursed today, huh? Yeah, I fear I am. <laughs> yeah. So in in the meantime, we've uh, we've gone back to the grove and uh, we've gone through like a red lightning sort of thing. Oh no! And it means Ooh. no. I didn't mean uh, the cycle. The... Man, no no luck with the with the platform cycles today. Really is not, huh? Ow. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, we got through this red lighting. Now we're in a different area, a different state of the world called Florida Ciela. This is where we're picking up this, our next crash fragment. This one's probably the most important in the entire run, I feel like. Uh, that's, that's one I would, the next one I would say is more important for speed runs. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, uh, but this one's very important for backtracking purposes. Th that too. So this crash fragment gives us the ability to warp. And this is why you went into this room for a split second. To be able to warp to an area, you have to have been physically present in the room that contains the safe bell you warp to. You don't need it, to use the bell, mind you, just in the same room, which is kind of weird. Yeah. As long as the game knows, because, uh, you know, you can pause to view the map. Uh, so, yeah, as long as the game can see that you've been in that room, you can warp to it. And, yeah, each area has a specific room and safe bell you warp to. And, yeah, that's the one for the Forlorn Monastery. And uh, get used to it, because we're going to be coming back to that room very often. All warps except for two are going to be to the mo to the Forlorn Monastery. So we've dipped into the Cinder Chambers now. This is where we're going to be finding out the uh, next boss. A little bit of item management there to get the, rid of the Cat put the Crystal Seed on. Here's a character we kind of passed uh, earlier uh, for the Eagle Eye viewers. This is the Arsonist partially damaged because this lovely knight that's with us uh, has been fighting this boss already. So we're just coming in partially uh, through a boss fight. Imagine an MMO where some where your friends are fighting a boss and you join midway through. Uh, but yeah, you can see the half charges. You can see the yellow particles coming out. So yeah, this has better yeah uh, damage output or DPS, if you will. If you're familiar with those terms. Oh, yeah, that's the damage of arsonist. That wasn't too bad. No, exactly. I just want to make sure to grab the item before I leave the room. If yes, I don't uh, grab it. If you it. don't, then you, when you come back, it's no longer there. Uh, and this one I really need. The damage output of this item in particular is incredibly powerful. Yeah, exactly. The pocket is sensory. So what it does is the it puts a flaming property on all of your attacks. And it does that for the Bachman patch on each of those individual little blocks that come down. It pretty much doubles the damage output. Doubles? doubles? Exactly. <laughs> Doubles or like 175% uh, damage output on the Bachman patch. Those two items synergize so incredibly well. And now we're about to first get an item. So the patch that Leo is playing on is 1.07, uh, which one of the key changes for the speedrun is that you are forced to transform back into a human when you interact with NPCs, which is 
slightly slower, but there's some other changes that have made 1.07 the, the fastest version for all categories. Uh, except this character here is the only exception in still in this patch. Uh, because it's like a cat witch. Uh, she gives us the monastery key. So we can go to the next boss. Yeah, Fennel. And uh, we've been uh, just starting off fights with the Bachman patch. It's uh, a tried and true method, except we're going to be doing it a little bit different here. We're going to be doing a very dedicated method of attacks with Fennel to, ma to uh, manipulate her into doing a specific pattern so we can insta-melt her. This is a notoriously difficult boss for anyone who's played it casually. So here's your catharsis of seeing Fennel get destroyed. I poisoned myself. <laughs> And yeah, there it happens. All right, that's fine. All right, take two. So yeah, one arrow, double sparse threat. Then she rolls backwards. She primes the sword. You take a position for the Buckman patches. And she just gets melted from here. Oh, that's fine. I can get cursed. That's fine. Yeah, cursed is fine. And poisoned would also have been fine because your damage this run does not get invalidated until the first tick of damage of poison comes in. And it's, uh, to be a little bit more specific, it's when you uh, take damage while there is a boss health bar on screen. There's a boss fight later where it's in two parts, and in between parts there's no health bar on screen, which you could theoretically uh, uh, take damage while there's no health bar on screen, and you would not be invalidated for damages, but it's not practical to actually bother with that. Yeah. Actually, no, some, pe some p people do, because some people use an item that damages yourself. Uh, yeah. for a power boost in between phases. Uh, but we'll get into that. Uh, and that item is the Tainted Missive, the damages boss item for Fennel. Also, this is the Royal Pinacotheca, the area we needed the crash mag fragments for. Uh, as Leo travels through this, uh, there's a lot to explain that just happened. Uh, so, the, uh, the Tainted Missive that we got from Fennel, uh, it powers you up 100% uh, as opposed to the Crystal Seeds 50%, and it has two uses versus the Crystal Seeds 1. The trade-off is that you deal 25% of your maximum health as damage to yourself. And if you have less than 25% of your max health remaining, it will kill you. You will die from it. So, Oops. Uh, on top of that, the Crest Fragment from uh, Fennel, uh, I will get to in a minute, because we didn't even talk about the, the Crest Fragment from uh, the Arsonist, even though we've been using it. It's the dash that you've been seeing Leo do in midair. Uh, the rings you see oh. pop up every now and again. Uh, yeah, when the dash is used, there's a ring, and then when uh, there's another ring appearing afterwards, that's when it's recharged. Uh, the crash fragments from Fennel is that you get an extra level that you can charge a bow to, which we refer to as a, a, a supercharge. And it fires a rapid flurry of arrows, and the damage of it was greatly increased in patch 1.07, and it's been one of the main contributors to 1.07 being the fastest for every version, uh, for every category, rather. Yeah. Hit this switch to uh, remove this platform. Once it's thin enough, we can pop through. Here's the next boss already. So take a position, Bachman patch, then walk in, pause to skip the, skip the intro, and yeah, rain down Bachman patches. And yeah, this is one of the toughest fights in the game because of the consequence of messing it up. Uh, I have to navigate all the way back around to where that fight was. Yeah, that is the closest save belt to this fight. And as we said, this is a, only Lubella 2 can be uh, does not have to be damaged, so this one has to be. As the this item we get is incredibly helpful for the extra damage on arrows, which we need for the uh, last few fights. Yeah, particularly the final boss has a strat where the damage boss item from this fight is vital. Okay, that's one. And okay, that's two. We'll okay, both. so that's phase one. So this is where you could take damage and you wouldn't lose the item. And yeah, some people would pop a tainted missive here. So yeah, the rapid flurry of arrows at the start here is uh, the the supercharge. Okay, that's uh... it. None. And then yeah, the item will spawn once this dialogue is gone Oops. and. Both bosses are gone. The heavy arrows. Oh, I actually... Here we go. I need to confirm that I've received them. There we go. And now we've got pretty much a long section of running around um, in cat form. So, someone. Let's hear some more uh, cat talk. 
Yeah. So um, we have 10 euros from Leon Macar saying, but can you pet the cat? And Oof, if I we wish have... I can you pet the cat, Leo? I mean... Th um, technically you can because there is a... Uh... Uh, there's a there was a run at Games Done Quick by Half Coordinated uh, 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 several years ago, uh, where he, he had a uh, he had a Kaho uh, a Kaho in cat form plush with him. So theoretically, the cat can be pets. Very well. So yeah, this is our uh, final mo this is our final monastery warp. Uh, so in the Royal Pinacotheca, that, that's where we needed to come for the true ending. We got an item called the Steeled Wind. The reason we need that is going to come up here. Uh, so once we... Because you have this windmill that looks like it's part of the background, but no, it's actually important. You use the field wind. And it starts spinning the windmill, which opens up this area underneath. You dip your maple leaf in hibisco tea. And now you get the fresh spring leaf, a more upgraded leaf. Uh, that is able to uh, purify the curse. So we've uh, we're all set now for... Uh, getting the true ending. So now we're going to navigate all the way back to the bell in the monastery. Yeah, because uh, we need to warp back to the area we just warped from to monastery, and the this bell that we constantly been warping to happens to be also be the closest to this. Uh, also, Leo used the Bachman patch here earlier to hit a switch that you will otherwise have you go around. It's that switch to the left to open up that. So, you know, using the Bachman patch not just for fights, but also for navigation. Reiterating how vital the Bachman patch of, is of an item. I can see a big yeah. flashy thing telling me of some things. Yeah, or should I say, yeah. While we were traveling back, I was wondering if I had a moment to plug something. Yeah, go ahead. Of course. So, upcoming soon is uh, Link to the Past. In, uh, it's going to be after Celeste, and there's a really fun bit war going on for that. So, um, you can vote for the players of that being friends, ending the game together, uh, going for the Triforce together, or you can vote with the bit war to make them enemies, uh, giving them a PvP battle after Ganon and having the winner take the Triforce. Um, a really fun incentive but i see the boss is coming up so uh good luck yeah this is clone angel uh lower one is the real one two uh two tainted missives Ex unfortunately leo was a little bit on the close side uh which meant the tainted the sparks that hit too early you wanted to hit later so um so you regain control faster essentially after the hit comes goes in uh because yeah once you deal the first hit to the clone angel the Essentially, an internal timer starts for her to teleport away. If you space the sparse threat correctly, then you will have enough time to do the second hit and two melee hits to get the quick kill. Luckily, if you miss it, you'll usually miss it in a way that where you're just one melee hit away. So it's just wait for the pump up, pump again, find the lowest one, and yeah, just get that final hit. And uh, final boss is here. We're here already. So time will come up once the queen dies. Uh, yeah, and it's on, like on the last on hit final, that I do. On final hit. I'll so, let double call it. It's a lot easier. Yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> also, I'll, I'll explain what you're about to do here. You just focus on actually doing it. Because yeah. here's the queen of Karst that we were going to look for, except it's actually the problem. So, triple melee hit. Dodge. We pop the tainted missive. Triple melee hit again. And yeah, full, full supercharge to uh, end phase one. If I don't miss, this might actually uh, be a problem. Ooh, this might be a problem, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna have to sit through this phase a bit. Be careful not to get hit here, because we need to keep our health topped up to be able to use the Tainted Missive a second time. Nope. No, okay, so we'll try this again. Uh, this is a very tricky fight to do, um, to like, actually uh, it just doesn't. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take much to, to, uh, to just slightly miss any of the steps. That's what makes it exactly. tricky. Uh, so yeah, let's so run the script again. Take the missive. Step aside a little bit so you don't have it come up under you. Dodge that attack while you do two melee hits. So yeah, another supercharge here. Jump up, hit it, and then one more hit, and then yeah, two spar threats will get the job done. Perfect. Now a bit of menuing to put the Bachman patch back in our arsenal. Uh, yeah, but also thing. the missive. Yeah. Yep. 
There we go. I usually replace the sparse threat with the Bachman patch, but... Yeah. And now we're into the, the final phase of the Queen. Yeah, this is a phase you only get if you've, like, completed the requirements for the true ending. Bachman patch, Konami comes out again. And now it's just whacking away until the supercharge comes up, and then it will be, and then it will be the end. But yeah, there's these big, there's these big, the watch, that's the, yeah, there's these big wide explosions that yeah, if you're in them, it will do enough damage for it. Eh? They just do so much damage, and uh, normally I don't walk into them, but a triple hit, uh, like with melee, will move you in the direction you're attacking. Yeah, um, you, yeah, you can change it. Uh, you can change it. You're not locked in the same direction for all three hits. If you, uh, if you after the second hit, put your control stick the other way, the third hit will go the other way, and that's how you can sort of maneuver yourself while you do melee hits, and you need to stay in one place. That's the, uh... and you can do that for every hit. So you can do, you could if you want, like do a melee hit left, right, left. If you push the stick uh, in the appropriate ways. Yeah, Taylor missive again. Oh, I'm that facing the wrong, the wrong direction. way. Ooh. I really need to do that in the right direction. Because the Bachman patch is what will actually get me through that fight. Yeah, so yeah, the so yeah, the idea is there two pa two patches, get some Konami damage in, and then do melee hits while you charge the arrow, because you can charge your arrow while doing a melee attack. Or while doing melee combos. That attack is awful. Um uh, uh, you do that until you get the supercharge, and then you release the supercharge, and they will do the remainder of the damage to uh, to wrap it up, to fully defeat the Queen of Karst. That's focusing here. All right, I'm gonna hit it this time. Yeah, just you. Yeah, just. Yeah, there's also a certain point where you wait for, which is about a second after the white flash happens. All right. And time. time. Here we go. Yeah. Bit unfortunate that uh, that uh, it took a couple of tries to get the queen down, but hey, still very nice time for this. Yep, that's it. Thirty-one is still a solid time for uh, for any marathon run. Yeah, especially with uh, Lubella throwing a bit and then me throwing on queen. <laughs> yeah. So what happens here is you uh, you solve the curse of the land of Karst by absorbing it into yourself, but you fa but you Kaho fades away in the process. So making the ultimate sacrifice. What do you mean? Karst is then safe, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, that was Momodora Rebbe Under the Moonlight. I highly recommend it. Very uh, very fun Metroidvania if you're into that kind of style of game. Um, do you have any closing messages? Um, yeah, what I would highly recommend is that you follow this man. Twitch.tv slash Leo Cadron, everyone. I don't even exactly, have to show myself you. out. Other people thank do it for me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, he does a bunch of, bunch of cool stuff. Uh, does this game, as you've seen as you've seen today, but he's also a, a really big uh, trauma center speedrunner, speedruns all the games, uh, does a lot of work for them. Uh, and general certified legend. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And give this man a follow. For this sick man's commentary, so I can just focus on the game. But yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much. Back to you, someone. Thank you, Leo, for that absolutely possum run. Um, we'll be throwing it over to an intermission. Soon coming up is Malak Bell with Celeste, where Chapter 5 will be blindfolded. So look forward to that. See you soon. <laughs>